And so I was in Burlington, Vermont, drunk. Because what else are you gonna do in Burlington? Just watch white people be happy? <laughs> Guys, if you've never been to Burlington, fun town. Founded in 1990 when a fish concert collided with a zip line convention. <laughs> Just a little town of like-minded Tiva sandals in the middle of a forest with a massive methamphetamine problem. <laughs> Definitely go in the fall when they harvest the blueberry marshmallow vape. It's delicious. <laughs> so I was there, two in the morning, drunk in a snowstorm, and I saw a piece of art in a window that stopped me dead in my tracks. It was a photograph of a dawn old-timey saloon playing the piano <laughs> with a little handkerchief around his neck like he was some little bandito that just happened to ride into what I'm assuming is an all-dog Wild West town, <laughs> probably on the back of a larger version of himself, then saw the bar, hopped off the dog, kicked open the doors, hopped in, had a shot of fire water, saw the piano, hopped up to tickle the old ivories, and the only newspaper dog in town was there at the perfect moment to snap a perfect photo. It's a goddamn piece of art. <laughs> and I was like, my daughter needs this. <laughs> so I went to bed, woke up the next morning, found the store. What the store is, turns out. It's a place where you can get dressed up in old-timey Wild West gear and get your picture taken in an old-timey saloon, which makes no sense for Burlington, Vermont. <laughs> like, it would... It's not in the Wild West, guys. It would make more sense if you could get dressed up as Bernie Sanders and eat some Ben and Jerry's, but whatever. <laughs> that guy had a dream. He made a weird store, all right? So I go in. And I say, I love this uh, photograph, this dog playing the piano. And the guy there, he's like, I took that photo. And I'm like, you're an artist. And he's like, do you want to know something about that? And I'm like, I do. He said, that dog wasn't actually playing the piano. <laughs> it's worth so much more to me now. And he thought I was just walking by and saw the photo and was like, he has photographic proof of dogs playing the piano! I gotta show this to the scientists, man! So I was like, that's amazing. I would love to buy it for my daughter. He gets very serious. He's like, oh, this photo's not for sale. This was a client. I took this photograph of a client's dog. Also, it's an heirloom frame from my wife's family. I could never part with it. And then in my head, I was like, oh no, if I don't get this for my daughter, I'm a bad dad, aren't I? And then I was like, maybe I should offer him more than I think it's worth. And, but the thing is, I don't know what things are worth. <laughs> and I was like, should I offer him $100? Like, is this worth like a, a third of a gas pump? I don't know. <laughs> and so then I panicked and I was just like, I'll give you 100 bucks. And he just went, are you kidding me? And I realized I had far overvalued the piano playing dog photo market in Burlington, Vermont. And he immediately sold it to me, heirloom frame and all. And I realized that at that time, I had become the bad guy in every 80s movie ever. Just like walking into a small town with my douchebag L.A. money, like, oh, is it not for sale, old man? Well, now it is. <laughs> but now I'm telling this story to you because I want, if you're ever in Burlington, Vermont, I want you to find that store. I want you to go in there. I want you to offer that man $100 for any dog playing piano photographs he might have. Because what I want to do is I want to artificially inflate the market for dog playing piano photography <laughs> in the small economy that is Burlington, Vermont, till it's no longer known for like hippies and hacky sacks, but mostly anthropomorphic dog photography. Because we can do that because that's how capitalism 